due to the following presentation of the National Football League. Ready for action, and away we go. Give him the football. Save a horse, right now. tight with style. Prescott down the right side, touchdown. Steve McNair with just a brilliant run. Rogers go back. Here's Aikman to Irving, touchdown. And it's Deion Sanders. What else is new? How about the throw? Eddie George, look at him go! Can he get in? No, he cannot. Tony Dorsett, 99 yards and a half. How about them Cowboys? Tennessee has pulled a miracle. Mild night, Nissan Stadium in Nashville across the Cumberland River from downtown. It's raining. And of course, that makes it look even more pronounced. They say light rain off and on, maybe for the next two hours. For the moment, we go down to the field and check in with Kaylee Harton. Kaylee. Well, Al, it has been almost six years to the day since the last time Josh Jobs started a football game that counted. And that was right here in Nissan Stadium as he led the Tennessee Volunteers to a win over Nebraska in the Music City Bowl and earned MVP honors. Since getting drafted in the fourth round in 2017 by the Steelers, Dobbs has been a perennial backup. When the Titans called him nine days ago, he had just wrapped up a walkthrough with the Lions practice squad. He drove from the facility straight to the Detroit airport, barely caught the last flight to Nashville, and he has been pouring over the playbook ever since. Dobbs told us he feels like he has had some practice, retaining a ton of information, considering all the work he put into his aerospace engineering degree in college. He is wearing a wristband tonight, but it's more of a safety net. He's been practicing in Tennessee without it because he said he wanted to look his new Titans teammates in the eyes as he called plays to give them confidence in his command. Al. Kaylee, so many interesting things at play tonight. His folks are both retired. Stephanie and Robert Dobbs took them to the Kennedy Space Center when he was seven. That's when he fell in love with aeronautics. And they went to Detroit to pick up his car and drove it here. Cost them 320 bucks to get it out of the parking lot in Detroit. There are the starters who are out tonight for Tennessee. They can only hope that some of those guys come back next week. Tannehill, Dupree, and Cunningham for certain will not. They're on IR. The Titans have won the toss. They've deferred Randy Bullock to kick off and Cavante Turpin will run it back and he has had such a great rookie season after being the MVP in the United States Football League. He'll be going to the Pro Bowl. And off we go from Nashville on this final Thursday night and Prescott will set up shop with his mates at the 25 yard line. Prescott hurt in week one fractured thumb came back in week seven. 20 touchdowns, a lot since that period of time, but 12, 12 interceptions, 11 since he came back. Pass rating a little above the league average. We won't see Tony Pollard tonight. We will see Prescott. Meanwhile, they start with a pass to the flat and picking up about three yards there is C.D. Lamb, who has emerged clearly as their number one receiver, having a terrific season. Mike McCarthy is in his third year as the Cowboys head coach. Got him to the playoffs last season. Had a home game against San Francisco, but they were upset there. Probably will not have a home game this year unless, as I say, they win the NFC East. They will have to go on the road if they're the number five seed if Philadelphia winds up as the division champion. Elliott in the backfield. Fake it to him. Prescott keeps his eyes downfield. Throws it. Slam again. So Lamb on two straight plays. Two connections. Trey Avery makes the stop there. Gain of 13 first down. And they bring the blitz. Fired from the right. Drop from the edge. You'll see this man. Look, it's showing that he's going to pressure and then drop. And he just has to deal with one-on-one -on -one with Avery. That little stutter and go stop. And a really good job. If you're going to blitz Dak Prescott, be careful because he's one of the top quarterbacks in this league at recognizing and to getting the ball out to CeeDee Lamb. Yeah, that's the full caveat Amdour. Meanwhile, up the middle. For a gain of close to four goes Zeke Elliott. He and Pollard, of course, have been back and forth this year with, with Tony out. We'll see Zeke 
tonight. We won't see, of course, Tony, who's inactive. They hope to have him back next week. But there is Tony right there, closing in on 1,000 yards. But in the meantime, what they really hope to have happen here, get a big lead and get Elliott out of the game and rest him. Yeah, as much as they can. I think he's really enjoyed having he and Pollard together. Malik Davis will get that chance tonight. Through the middle. Seek again. Stopped at the 49-yard line, setting up a third down and three for Dallas. Get used to us saying this. Zach Martin, the right guard, a top guard in the league. Really good feel on these double teams. This is a veteran offensive line, one of the top lines in the league. He's able to sustain that block and then use the timing to be able to climb up to the rookie, Jack Gibbons. Technician there, Al. Been to eight, eight Pro Bowls. Third down and three, the fake to Elliott. Prescott has it knocked down. Rashad Weaver knocks it away, so the Titans hold, and Dallas will punt. It's a really good play by Weaver here, who's getting an opportunity. See, he's got his hand down the ground. Great recognition right away. Gives Lamb a little push. Try to disrupt the timing, and then the bonus to be able to get the hand up with that length has those long arms to be able to knock it away. But the thing I loved is that right there. Get C.D. Lamb off schedule and then knock the ball away. He starts tonight because Bud Dupree is now on IR. Brian Anger comes in to punt. Robert Woods with the Rams last year, first year in Tennessee. Sets up and calls for the fair catch at his own 13-yard line. Two and a half into the game. Joshua Dobbs ready to take over. What's next? What Following Deion Sanders' approach to coaching life and leadership for Jackson State, now, of course, taking his talents to Boulder. The Parthenon here in Nashville, you do know they trucked that in from Athens a few years ago, of right? Of course, yeah. yeah. From the 13 yard line. Dobbs keeps his eyes downfield, throws, and the first pass he throws tonight is complete. The Chad Aquanquo, who's had a great season at tight end, so off to a good start is Joshua Dobbs, who was drafted by the Steelers. Studied under Roethlisberger. Of course, Mike Tomlin was the coach there. And then he went to Jacksonville briefly. Then he went to Cleveland. He backed up Jacoby Brissett this season. Then he went to Detroit for a couple of weeks and now here meanwhile Malik Willis who started the last couple of games is on the bench tonight from the 25 yard line on first down up the middle with Derrick Henry out they go to Hassan Haskins he's the rookie out of Michigan Demarcus Lawrence with the stop there so with Tannehill their starter but he's been off and on hurt all season long finally the ankle injury Puts him on IR. They went to Willis. Meanwhile, they bring Dobbs in. And this is kind of like, in a way, it's almost a tryout for next week for him. It really is. I mean, it's not just come out here and play. Like you said, everything on the line next week with the Jags. Just a rehearsal to kind of see what he can do and find out if he can do better than where they've been the last few weeks. Keeps it himself. Around the corner he goes. Stays in bounds. Picks up the first down. But a flag is thrown. Sean Hockley is there. Yep. Initial indication is an offensive hold. I think Burks out in front of him, grabbed onto the jersey. Offense, number 16. It's a 10 yard penalty. Replay, second down. Mm -hmm. That erases that. Burks was their number one pick out of Arkansas. You see the face there, Mike Vrabel. You know, th this has kind of been the story of the Titans. Positive plays, left hand gets out there. He locks on to Diggs there. And that, like I said, this has been the story. They have a positive play, and then it comes back and takes away not only a good play but now you get behind the sticks and this is not an offense equipped to get behind the sticks against this defense second and 19 yeah Mike had the look of a guy coaching a team that's lost five in a row and that's knocked down at the line of scrimmage and that's batted there Neville Gallimore with the bat third down and long it looked like Demarcus Lawrence maybe on a little twist also able to get in there from the outside to the inside Comes in there to the inside. Watch his long arms. Boom, right there. Able to bat that ball away. So now they put this offense in a very difficult position for any offense, but especially this offensive line against Micah Parsons and company. Yeah, third down and 16 from the 19-yard line. 
Cowboys only rush three. Pass out in the flat. And with a little hurdle move there, Quanco, the tight end, is stopped. It'll be fourth down and six. This is a little thing, but a thing I love is the hustle here. It's just they're getting the ball out of hands. They know what they're up against. But watch Lawrence. He's matched up right over the center. He sees it. And instead of giving up on the play, when your best players are playing like that, that's when you become a dangerous team. That's great effort there on that third down. So Ryan Stonehouse, 53.4 average. He is on his way to breaking an 82-year-old record held by the great Sammy Baugh for gross punting average. And this won't hurt at all as Turpin collects for the moment after juggling it. A flag is thrown at midfield at the end of the play. And we'll get the call in a second. Meanwhile, averaging 53.2 yards per punt. And Stonehouse here will get the official call in a second. And Sean Hockley goes Illegal over. Motion, kicking team number 38. This five-yard penalty will be added to the end of the play. It's first down Dallas. Timeout. All right. First down Dallas here. As you look down Broadway in Nashville. No score. Well, the Cowboys season started with a thud. Dak Prescott opening night. Fractured thumb. Was out until week seven. Meanwhile, the number is not very good weeks two through six. But Cooper Rush did come in and go four and one during that period. So Dak comes back. Since he's come back, first in points, second in yards, first and third down conversion rate. So he got healthy, and the team got healthier. And speaking of healthy, he had a healthy offseason coming into this year. He's probably in the best shape of his life. It's great to see him come back from, from that thumb. And I think right now that there is such a connection with he and Kellen Moore, the play caller. He has complete command of this offense. And his legs are back after the ankle in 20. Here's Elliott. He gets stopped at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, for Prescott, he was telling us yesterday, I said, what was your very first thought when you knew you, you broke your thumb? He said, I can't believe it. I was in the best shape ever. I wanted to atone for, you know, the way last season ended in the loss to San Francisco, and all of a sudden he thought he, he might be out for the year, but he wasn't. Yeah, and, and I think that really stood out all week, right? The people we talked to, every single person bringing up that 49ers loss and how that's driven them. Second and ten. And that catch is made close to a first down. Goes Dalton Schultz, who's been their second leading receiver. And another flag is down on the near side of the field, well away from the play. I think Tier Tart nose guard jumps here. See the big fella. Once he gets Three. moving, it's hard to pull Offside. back. Defense number 93. It's a five-yard penalty. Replay second down. Yeah, they if they. Declined that it would have been third and two. They'll take the down and make it the second down and and five Titans under Mike Rabel is normally one of the least penalized teams in the league and that is complete and into Tennessee territory to Dalton Schultz there for a first down I tell you, he another player that gives Dak Prescott so many different weapons. You get caught up with CeeDee Lamb and these receivers, and then you got to worry about Schultz over the middle between these backers really coming on 6'5", 245, and now in his fifth year out of Stanford, kind of got, taking his game to another level. Little flip here. Lamb around the corner. But the Titans are equal to that task. And second down and long, second and nine. Yeah, Dallas, their identity is their run game. As much as Dak and CeeDee Lamb and these receivers get the attention, Kellen Moore telling us this week that, hey, listen, I, we, we know that they're good against the run, but we gotta, we got to hang with it. we got to find ways to be able to run the football with, with Zeke tonight and eventually maybe Malik Davis because it sets up our play-action game and where we can attack over the middle of this defense where they're really vulnerable. See the Titans second against the run but second worst against the pass as Elliott takes the ball to the 37 yard line tackled there by Joe Jones it'll be third down and five for Dallas 
you know, you and I had this this Tennessee team the last time they won a game um, at Lambeau, and I think we all walked out of Lambeau that night thinking, boy, th this team is really aggressive. They obviously have had injuries, but Shane Bowen is a defensive play caller along with Mike Vrabel. They are all about getting downhill and being disruptive and one of the top teams. In fact, they lead the league in third down defense. That's T.Y. Hilton, bottom of the screen. Made that big catch on third and 30 Saturday. Meanwhile, the pass to the outside here is hauled in by T.Y. Hilton for a first down. Now you stack him behind Dalton Schultz, the big tight end. And he's just watched a little slight hesitation to give Schultz a chance to get upfield. There's the cushion with the soft corner from Avery. And Dak Prescott says, thank you very much. He said it didn't take long for him to get into sync with T.Y. Hilton once he started to throw with him. Meanwhile, here is a look at Malik Davis. And with Pollard not playing, we're going to get a chance to watch the rookie out of Florida, who you covered in college football, of course. Yeah, you're going to love him. You know, he, he's got great upside and potential. Had some injuries in Florida, um, which kind of slowed him down. And now that he's healthy, he's a guy that has great quickness and speed, can catch the ball to the backfield. And, yeah, that's, that's the tandem now with Pollard down. He'll have to give Zeke some uh, some time off throughout the game tonight. Seen a little action this season. That was his 24th carry. A second and seven. Off the fake. The pass is incomplete to the near side. And he got a flag again here. That's Noah Brown. And he got Roger McCreary, the rookie out of Auburn, who's had a really good yep. season, but gets flagged Plus here. Third. Defense number 21. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. Now watch at the top of the route. I think it's a good call. I think he gets to Jersey. Can't quite see it from there, but I think he lost he, his his hand grabbed the hold of that jersey. And Noah Brown has had a big watch here. Right there. Looks like he may have grabbed onto that jersey enough for the for the call. But boy, Noah Brown, what a year he has had uh, from being a special teams guy to being a go-to guy now for Dak Prescott. First down at the 13 yard line. Through the middle, threading his way. Nice pick up there into a lot of traffic goes Malik Davis. Second down and three at the six yard line. He and Damian Pierce, who plays for the Texans and is enjoying a rookie year himself uh, in the backfield. Now you're seeing what, what he can do. Here's Tyler Smith, another rookie. What a powerful man at left tackle who stepped in for Tyron Smith, who had the injury in camp and did so well that when Tyron Smith came back, they inserted him there on the right side. There he is, number 77. And timeout is taken here by the Tennessee Titans with a few seconds under six minutes left in the first quarter. So Mike Vrabel, he'd won two-thirds of his games in his career before this five-game losing streak, so he had one of the best winning percentages among current coaches. <laughs> it's so funny, we were talking to them. They're gonna, they hope to get a new stadium here in, a, in three or four years. And I said to them the last time we saw them, they asked you for any input into what you want to see in that new stadium. He said, hey, man, I'm just trying to win enough games to coach there. In, in vintage Vrabel form, too, with a little bit of tone yep. to it. Exactly. Elliott's back in on second and three. Fights his way for what should be a first down. And a first and goal forthcoming. That's what Seek brings to the table is a play that's designed to go up on the up the middle. He bounces this thing back to the left. Good job of blocking in the backside with those two tight ends. And just feel like Zeke's in a, in a better place this year. I think the, the tandem of he and Pollard keeps him fresh. Looks like he's in better shape. Has a little bit more pop. You know, I, I feel like he's finishing his runs uh, like the old Zeke. Would especially down in this area. Seventh year in the league. Meanwhile, the snap is going to be taken from shotgun by Elliott, and he'll get it to the one yard line. You've got Kellen Moore calling in the plays, the offensive coordinator, and a guy who had a few interviews last year and certainly will be on the radar of a few teams after this season is over in this era of the wave of young head coaches you're right he'll be on a short list for a lot of teams if there are opportunities out there it's only 34 years old been the coordinator since 19. Elliott with a touchdown in eight straight games and does he make it nine he does 
So they stay on the ground. Ten plays, seven of them are runs. And Dallas takes the early lead. It's behind McGovern, the left guard, Tyler Smith, McHugh, and the, the, the tight end. You see him lined up as a fullback. Good job here, fighting again, finishing the run, finishing that, which is exactly what he does, and by extending makes it pretty obvious that he gets the ball into the end zone. Jason Peters in his 19th season among those providing the opening for him. Brett Maher, who leads the league in points, adds one more. And with four and a half to go in the opening quarter in Nashville, the Dallas Cowboys seeking their 12th win of the season on top 7 other. He has 12 plus sacks in each of his first two years. Reggie White and Alden Smith, the only others since 82 and sacks became an official statistic. Nine games with two or more. Tied for the most in first two seasons with Alden Smith. And he will be coming out onto the field very shortly. There he is, but wearing a full-on cast on that left hand. Bert. Yeah, there, there was some talk this week about him being a little bit dinged from, from last week's Philly game where he played so well. But you see what kind of guy he is. This is looked at as a game that Dallas should be able to handle, but they are taking no precautions as far as taking any game lightly. They are coming out here to play and all hands on deck mentality. So he's out here playing football. Love him on the edge. You know, last year he, he was on the edge as a rookie about 41% of the time, and this year we're seeing him make such a difference up close to the line of scrimmage. Well, we said we would see him out on the field, but for the moment we'll see him on the sideline. Dan Quinn, the stellar defensive coordinator, a man again who will get some interviews. Meanwhile, Parsons just ran onto the field. And made the tackle. Apart from that, yeah. <laughs> There's a guy who, who was walking on the sideline, ran out onto the field, and takes down Hassan Haskins after a gain of two. And you run away from him, you think you got a chance to, to be able to be safe, right? Watch him run onto this field late, <laughs> and then just keep your eye on him because you're going to run away from him. Okay, there's 11. Let's go this way. Watch him get inside. He does this as well as anybody. He shoot gaps into the inside with his speed and, and upper body strength to beat those tight end blocks. You've heard of the lonesome men. That's the lonesome linebacker <laughs> racing onto the field. Second down and eight. Dobbs throws and errantly incomplete. Hooper was the intended receiver. Third down and eight and Josh has started two of his first four for 22 yards. Now the first series they were trying to get him out on the edge both running and, and with play action. Let's just cut, kind of step back for a second for everybody again. Keep in mind, he's been here for about eight days trying to digest this playbook. If you took a poll right now and said, name me everybody in this huddle, he might know four guys. Like, he is really raw, so you got to respect what he's trying to do, especially against Micah Parsons and the, the speed that this Dallas defense has. He said, I, I know the faces. I'm trying to put the names with them now. Dobbs fires a little high, and that's incomplete. Intended for Robert Woods, and so it's a pretty rapid three and out. Pretty good ball, right? Yeah. I mean, for a third down, you're sitting in the pocket with this offensive line, which is primarily backups. You sit in there. They do a good job of protecting. You put it right there where a veteran like Robert Woods, he typically he's going to make that catch against uh, Noshawn Wright. Ouch. Mm. So now Stonehouse to punt. His first was 48. This is a line drive boot. Caught at the 24 by Turpin. And the Pro Bowl returner with a 10-yard run back out to the 34-yard line. Ryman Auditorium here in Nashville. 7-0 Dallas. The wounded Titans. Injuries over the last two seasons. 91 players used last year, most in history. 84 so far this year. Who knows who may play next week for the first time. Almost 600 games missed over the last two years. Injured reserve 83 times. They fill up that IR list, and no other team is even close. Incredible. They had 91 last year. There's Jeffrey Simmons, of course, yeah. who's... Not able to play tonight. 91 last year, including Derrick Henry. They found a way to be the one seed in the AFC. True. Um, 
amazing. I mean, Vrabel did one heck of a job last year from the 35-yard line now. Malik Davis is the running back. He'll get stopped behind the line of scrimmage. So they start the season, of course, with Tannehill. He gets hurt. You know, will Dobbs show them enough tonight to start next week in Jacksonville winner take all? Well, they, they, they have really struggled these, these last couple weeks with Malik Willis, who has tremendous physical ability, but he's a rookie in that developmental stage. It's hard to put him out there and expect him, especially the backup offensive lineman, to be able to get it done. Meanwhile, the pass over the middle is caught. Nice game here, and there goes Davis, the rookie. Like I said, he, he's not only a threat to be able to run the football, but you know, he is really dangerous with soft hands, and then he's got good acceleration up field. I mean, I, I know Pollard, who made the Pro Bowl this year, is has become a, a proven commodity, but I think Dallas Cowboy fans that have not seen a lot of Malik Davis, they're going to like what they see. That was a gain of 18. Prescott chased, but dumps it off underneath to Dalton Schultz. To the 47, he goes for a short game. Basham put the heat on that time, chasing Prescott out of the pocket. Second and nine. I mentioned now Damian Pierce, who's had the monster year for the Texans. You know, last year in that backfield, Malik Davis, and he split time. I mean, it was almost 50-50. So you'd see the year that, that Pierce has enjoyed, and Gives you an idea that what uh, Malik Davis, how he's viewed. Yeah, Pierce got to be the number one back there. Meanwhile, here he's number three. And tonight he's off to the races again and gets taken down from behind to the 25-yard line by Kevin Byard. Big gain there. That's 24 more yards for him. And watch Biotis, this center. Nice job here being able to work up and pick up a, a nice block. This offensive line works so hard together. And, you know, one of, the, one of the few offensive lines, for the most part, other than Tyron Smith, who worked his way back and they lost Terrence Steele, for the most part, this group's been able to work together. So there's continuity and chemistry, great communication. From the 24, that'll be a short game here, C.D. Lamb. Remember, the Cowboys a number of years ago put that major priority on that offensive line. And they went out and they got, they got Martin, they got Tyron Smith, they got Travis Frederick, right. who had a shorter career than because of the Guillain-Barre syndrome. So that was such a priority, and, and here we are all these years later, and they're still one of the best in the league. You know, and, and I think we've seen games that we've covered, teams making the defensive line a big emphasis, and we all get caught up on draft day, and the quarterbacks, boy, can never go wrong by investing up front. Noah Brown makes that grab, be third and one. You know, we're talking about Zach Martin, the guard. How good is he? Eight Pro Bowls. In his whole career, seven holding penalties. Seven. And that's if you include the postseason, right? I mean, he's had six in the regular season. Eight, eight Pro Bowls, seven holding calls. It's just... just Otherworldly. Yeah, just a, a technician with incredibly... Just a gifted, gifted physically and, and just understands this scheme. Number one pick out of Notre Dame. Meanwhile, they stop Elliott in the backfield so third and short she can't get away from jack gibbons setting a fourth down and we'll find out what they're going to do after the break because that is the end of the first quarter in nashville with the score dallas seven and tennessee nothing you're watching thursday night football all the gummies well, Coach, I know it has only been two drives, but what have you seen from Josh Dobbs so far? Well, I mean, I think that there has been some pretty decent, uh, you know, delivery. I thought we had, uh, you know, Hoops got to come out of that and maybe catch it, and I think I think it was a good ball. It was good protection on third down, you know. But, you know, again, I don't think Josh has uh, had enough opportunities here to kind of figure out uh, what it looks like. I'd say on a first two drives, like you mentioned, there, there were some good things. I thought we had a drop, and, you know, I think we need to help him out on the other one. Thanks, Coach. That's a very honest appraisal. Here's Maher now to try to make it 10-0, which he does. So he adds four points tonight to his league-leading total and four seconds in to the second quarter. It's 10-0, and tonight's aerial coverage is being presented by Auto Trader. There was downtown Nashville. You come on across the...
Cumberland River. You can walk across that the first bridge you saw and into Nissan Stadium, home of the Titans since 1999. They moved to Tennessee in 97, played one year in Memphis, one year at Vanderbilt here, and then to Nissan. And, and you did a lot of their games when Eddie George, Steve McNair, your, your whole group would come in. I, I can remember watching a lot of those games with Eddie George against Ray Lewis, Ravens, and the, and the Titans. A lot of times it get to the AFC uh, playoffs. What a, what a great rivalry that became. It was, and you had uh, the freak. Javon yeah, Javon Kirst. Kirst. Yeah. And this is a team, of course, that went to the Super Bowl, played the Rams back in 99, yep. was tied at 16. Isaac Bruce caught the touchdown pass, and the game ended with Dyson trying to get into the end zone so to send it to overtime, and Mike Jones made the tackle. I will say this, living here, Mike Vrabel has brought an energy back to this franchise that has been missing before he got here. For sure. Well, Todd Downing is, is uh, an offensive coordinator that is faced with a tough task of a quarterback that's been here for eight days, making his first career start. Not to mention, Derrick Henry's not in the game. you got Hassan Haskins as a rookie playing, and you got a lot of backup offensive linemen. Talking to him yesterday, he said, listen, I've got it till 15 seconds on that play clock. I can communicate things to, to Josh to let him know what the reads are before I let him know what the play is, just to try to spoon feed him as much as I can. He's the guy who can absorb a lot right now. He loses the ball. Demarcus Lawrence stripped it away and then throws it away and incomplete. But a nice recovery to avoid the the fumble and the turnover there. The Cowboys have created a ton of takeaways. Lawrence almost came away with the ball. Yeah, relentless effort does a good job. The awareness to knock that ball away and Josh Dobbs very fortunate to get it back into his hands. Look at the length on Demarcus Lawrence. Everybody talks about the Cowboys only one sack in the last three games. A lot of that is the style of offenses that they've been going up against and people getting the ball out quickly. From the 25-yard line. Through the middle. Pick of about three there for Haskins. Third down and seven. So right now, Todd Downing is already starting to communicate. And like I said, he's especially on third downs, he's trying to give him an idea of, of what to expect from coverage, what to expect as far as his first read. He told me he, a lot of the concepts that he used in Cleveland with Steven, Kevin Stefanski have transferred over to what he's doing here. So he'll give him a concept and a quick read and where to go with the football. The guy who studied aeronautical engineering and was a straight-A student in Tennessee, he can process it too. Third down and six. Dobbs, deep downfield, and the pass is hauled in inside the 35-yard line by Racy McBear. Go figure. Now Donovan Wilson looks like he's playing a half-field safety, but how about the recognition by Dobbs to see Wilson come down? He sees that, and he says, if you're going to give me that, I'll take that easy read and downfield throw here on third down. But good post-snap read by Josh Dobbs. Who is racing McBath? He's played in two games, came out of LSU, six-round pick last year, his second catch of the season. From the 32-yard line. Off the fake, rolling and keeping. And stopped after a pickup of about seven by Damone Clark. Crowd wanted a flag for a little extracurricular stuff. Instead, it's going to be second down and three. And that's what you can do with him. You know, with the mobility, the athleticism, he's able to, especially on first and ten, a team that's known to run the football, Dallas is going to load up on early downs. Great job of moving him and getting him outside of that pressure. They brought a blitz there from J. Ron Curse, and with that boot, he's able to get around that. You can see what he can do by keeping the ball and going. And for a gain of seven, second and three. Keep it on the ground. And fighting. Very close, but a little short. Haskins there, stopped by Clark. Al, I go back to eight days. I'm so impressed with these quarterbacks that do this. You heard him not just call the play. He's killing it. He's based on the look that he sees. There's recognition for him to be able to get out of a call, go to another call. So he's not just out there trying to remember the plays. 
This guy's at the line of scrimmage making adjustments based on the defense that he's seen. With this guy's background, aeronautical engineering, straight A student, and all of the rest, and you can't believe the tests he took when he was quarterback. They talk about it's not rocket science. This guy could do rocket science. Third and issues. Keeps it. Gets it. First down. Joshua Dobbs. Sixth year in the league, Tennessee class of 2017. 4.0 in aerospace engineering. 23 and 12 record at Tennessee. School record for rushing yards and rushing TDs by a quarterback. Fourth round pick at Pittsburgh. Mostly on the bench last game played was in week 17 of the pandemic season 2020. Haskins, the running back, fake it to him, rolling, keeping his eyes downfield, but taken down at the 26-yard line. Donovan Wilson having a great year. The safety coming up and taking him down for a loss of four. They go right back to that same boot on first and ten to try to get away from the pressure. I think they sense this is their best chance to throw the ball, but give Dallas credit. Really good coverage downfield. You see Diggs in the background, Curse, and these three safeties, Hooker, Wilson and curse when we talk with the coaches this week That's the first thing that Mike McCarthy brought up is how solid and consistent those three have been on the back end of this defense and the versatility that they bring to this defense Second down 15 Rush four throws it underneath caught very short gain here if any but meanwhile picking it up and I think they blew it dead but in the meantime for the moment passing is going to take it to the one yard line so it's possible they didn't blow that play dead yeah, the, the, the yeah I think they're going to bring it well let's see what they're going to do Anthony Barr hits him and let's see he looks like he's down backside yeah. clearly oh, yeah. down and then the ball comes out yep no question well meanwhile they're, they're going to have to challenge because they have ruled it for the moment of first and goal, but you just saw what McCarthy just saw him. <laughs> and he's going to smile and go, you can't, you know, come on. Take well, a he, look at that replay. Right nobody now. had a better view yeah. live than that side of the field. <laughs> is that the runner is I mean, that's why he's probably smiling like, guys, right. what are we looking at yeah. here? Yeah. As we were discussing the room, Dallas threw their challenge flag. They were allowed to keep that challenge flag. It's third down at the 25-yard line. All right, they got it right. Sean Hockley yeah. saying, hey, they get to keep the challenge. They made two rulings on the play. One said he was down. One said, no, he wasn't down. But there's no doubt about that. But elbow, you name it. Yeah, and, and like I said, Mike McCarthy had the best view from where he was He was sitting. He was waiting for the officials to call. And because they went hurry up, it looked like he got a little nervous, threw the flag just to be safe. And sure. They're smart to give it back to him. But yeah, yeah. Titans putting together a little drive here. Yep, let's see know? if they can make it pay off for yep. at least a field goal. Third down and 13. Ball at the 24 yard line. Pressure, look out, look out, and down he goes, and the ball comes out as well. Cowboys pounce on it, think they have it. No signal yet from the officials. That's Dante Fowler. He'll get the credit for the sack here. Meanwhile, somebody is half man, half bloodhound at the bottom of that pile. Dallas. And that's the way that once promising drive comes to a halt. 10 nothing Cowboys. Defense and Demarcus Lawrence really had an assist here to help out Dante Flower with his alignment. He is lined up on the inside shoulder of LaRaven Le Le Clark, and that creates the one-on-one -on -one opportunity because Roos, the guard, has to kick out. And once he kicks out, then it's a mismatch with Fowler's able to win, and look who's at the bottom trying to come up with that. None other than Micah Parsons. He can't use that club, so he's just trying to pull it in there with the right hand. Got the scoop. Cradles the ball on the way to the sideline. Meanwhile, first down here and a gain of about eight. Prescott to Dalton Schultz. 
think you and I and everybody knew that Josh Dobbs getting a lot of attention, making his first career start, but all of these linemen, a lot of them are backups, going against this defense, one sack in the last three games, two already tonight. Well, a few mismatches on the field tonight, but the Tennessee offensive line and the Dallas defensive line at the very top. To the outside, that pass incomplete, tries to go to Schultz again. He's already caught three tonight. It's going to be third down and three. Even when healthy, Mike Rabel's team wins with kind of the old-fashioned way, with being efficient, right? Not having a lot of penalties, winning the turnover margin, running the football, winning special teams in field position, and you know, let alone when you're trying to do it with backups. Third and three, Prescott fires, that's caught. To the 49 and the first down, T.Y. Hilton, who was out of football this year, until Dallas signed him a couple of weeks ago after they took a look at OBJ and said, no, he's not ready. He could still do it, man. He, he is in good shape, comes in ready to go. What's amazing is another guy that came in has only been there a short time, signed December 12th, and already not only knows the system, but has a really good feel with Dak and the chemistry on third downs like that. I think I read Andrew Luck said he was my favorite teammate in those years at Indianapolis, meanwhile, threading his way for a gain of four, goes Zeke Elliott to the 46-yard line. I liked what Kellen Moore told us this week, too. He said, you know, the thing that's really stood out to me is not just his ability. I mean, he's a world-class athlete and has a heck of a career. He said he helps the room. He is so good for C.D. Lamb to see what a pro, how he approaches things. He said it's like having another coach. He'll be on the field in practice going over things and teaching the younger receivers. He said the biggest beneficiary probably has been CeeDee Lamb. A huge play last week, 33 years old, third and 30. Drops it. Does he recover it? Tennessee says no, we've got it, and they do. For the Titans that time, Pierre Tart plugging up the middle, number 93, and he's off to the video screen to celebrate. Now he is a handful, over 300 pounds, really taking his game to another level, more mature. And with all the injuries around him, he has stepped up. Looks like he's actually off sides there just the, by, a, by a little bit. Ball, I don't know, just came out. He recognized it. Just I don't know if Dak ever really had a grip or a handle on it, so good recognition by the big fella. You imagine that big man, 300 pounds. He looks down. He sees a football. <laughs> he sees a football. A little barrel roll there, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so one turnover begets another, and on first down here you got Julius Chestnut, who carries for a gain of one. Chestnut, a rookie out of Sacred Heart in Fairfield, Connecticut. The old. Baseball shortstop and manager Bobby Valentine was the athletic director there a few years ago. You guys, where it is, Sacred yeah, Heart. You guys are breaking that down this morning. Mm -hmm. Love that. Well, we're breaking down everything. Oh, we had it all cut. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> 49 yard line, second down and nine. Well, play action pass is low but caught. Nick Westbrook Akini with a short gain here. And that'll set up a third down and five for the Titans. So Dan Quinn knows that if I bring this guy, he's going to side adjust or throw a hot. So he's going to try to bring the corner up tight here and bland. Bring the pressure, make him get that ball out of his hands, and then tackle him short of the first down to set up a third down. So you almost bait the quarterback to make that adjustment and then bring the other defensive back up tight to be able to help out. Five of nine is Dobbs right now for 67. Third down and five. Hangs in the pocket. Fires, and it's incomplete. Cooper was open for the moment. It'll be fourth down. Well, the beauty of having so many pass rushers is yeah, you can stunt, mix some things up up front, but you're only rushing four. So you got seven guys back there with their eyes on the quarterback taking away any potential window there on third down. So Stonehouse trying to set the gross punting record, but the problem with this one is he's on the other side of the 50. So this is more of a shorter kick with backspin, 
Calling four and making the fair catch at the eight yard line is Cavante Turpin. Six and a half to go to the half. Ten to nothing. Cowboys. Here you got Philadelphia already in the playoffs. Minnesota's the North champion. San Francisco out west. Meanwhile, you got Tampa Bay at the moment on top. You got the Cowboys who've already clinched the Giants and Washington. If the season ended at this moment, which it won't, by the way, they'd also be in the in the playoffs. <laughs> but still, hey, plenty to be determined. How exciting is this going to be in the postseason in the NFC? Crazy. Start the drive from the eight-yard line, and Prescott will throw at the feet of Schultz. You know, Dallas. Dallas's win against Philly last week, I think, creates some belief there. Philly, once they get Jalen Hurts back, San Fran with Brock Purdy, the confidence I think they're growing around with him and that defense. Minnesota seems to find ways to win games late. The, the seeding is so important. The number one seed, they'll get two home games to get to the Super Bowl. At least if you're two, three, four, you get a home game at least one. If you're five, you probably have three road games. And that's the fate that Dallas may face right now as they complete the pass out to the 23-yard line to Lamb. C.D. Lamb making his fifth catch of the night. Yeah, I, I would argue right now that, that Dak Prescott and C.D. Lamb are, have as good a chemistry as any quarterback and receiver in the NFL. And, and I, it just, I think it's the work that they put in together in the offseason, having a healthy offseason. I mean, the, that, the accuracy right there and the route running and the timing is about as good as you can get between those two there. The rookie Malik Davis, they fake it to him. Prescott rolling, Prescott throwing a bomb, and Lamb is there. He had stopped second and ten. So Jerry Jones has owned the team since 1989. There is Jerry and Gene Jones. He buys it in 89. He wins the Super Bowl in his fourth year. He wins the Super Bowl in his fifth year. He wins the Super Bowl in his seventh <laughs> year. Oh, this is easy. Not since 95. I couldn't believe when you, you brought that up in the meeting this morning, the last time they won on the on the road right. in the in the postseason. you got to go back to the Troy Aikman days. You like do. Early 90s. The mid-90s for sure. Yeah. And they're, they're going to probably have to win all their playoff games on the road. The way it looks. That's Mario Edwards stopping Malik Davis in his tracks to make it third down and long. What, what a good job here by Mario Edwards. You have to Marcus Walker and Mario Edwards both have got to kind of emerge and step up, and he's holding the edge here. It's a good matchup against the, the rookie tight end, Jake Ferguson. Look at that power by Edwards. I mean, he's able to just shed Ferguson and get him off of him, not only set the edge, but make that play in the backfield. That was beautiful. A little over five to play in the half. It's third down and 11. Pressure put on Prescott, but he's able to get it away and complete it to Lamb, and Lamb spins away, and his forward progress will net him the first down. Well, there they are again. And and the Titans roll the dice. They bring pressure. They bring Byard on, on the blitz, and you're going to get a one-on-one -on -one matchup against a rookie corner. That is a dangerous thing to not bracket him or use help on the outside. Great feel there of the pocket by Dak. Gets just enough time, and there's his guy again on third down, C.D. Lamb. Lamb now with six catches on eight targets for 46 yards. Lamb and Gallup are stacked now to the left side. Hand the ball off here, cutting it back. Zeke Elliott out to the 37. With C.D. Lamb with Amari Cooper moving on to Cleveland. I think he is... Just taking that, taking his presence and his, his leadership to another level and his awareness of the offense. And I think on top of that, I, I think it's uh, a guy that you can move around. He knows all three positions now lined up in the slot. No huddle, pick up the pace a little bit. And that pass, does he stay in bounds? Michael Gallup, and he does. So Gallup had that uh, knee injury and surgery late last season. Came back early this year, but still kind of working his way back to 100%. Yeah, it looks like he does a great job with that right foot, the toe tap there to get it down and get that conversion. Beautiful throw, and Gallup, a guy that just seems to be getting more confident every week with that knee. From the 48, rifles one juggle, and then picked off. 
Kevin Byard comes away with the pick. Peyton Hendershot could not hold on right there. Gave it up, and the Titans pick up another takeaway. Right on the money, and then into the hands of Byard. Six. Only Howard has more since 2017. Meanwhile, you got Dobbs dumping it off. That's caught there by Chestnut. Julius Chestnut inside the 40 to the 31 yard line. The center, Corey Levin, came out and led the way, and that's a gain of 33. And they caught him in man coverage on first and 10. And once you get a block on that linebacker, Barr, 42, with the lineman downfield there, Aaron Brewer. A lot of guys have their backs turned to the football, so you're getting downfield, and we're all learning what Hassan Haskins can do in the NFL. Had a great career last year. Now we're seeing what Julius Chestnut can do as a young player. Tuned in late, Derrick Henry inactive tonight, saving him for next week. 31-yard line, keep it on the ground, and this time it's only a one-yard pickup for Mr. Chestnut. Second down. Can we always focus on on the skill guys, uh, but I just can't say enough about what this Tennessee Titans team's facing. You know, with a team that prides itself on physicality and offensive line play, and Derrick Henry, and you're, you're Aaron Brewer, really the only guy that started. I mean, he's the only starter up there. Everybody else is a backup that they're playing. You don't have Derrick Henry, and when you see those big plays like that, it's a lot to do with the execution up front with that offensive line on that screen. Second to nine. Rolling has time. Oh, and it's almost intercepted in his hands. Trayvon Diggs, and he would have had the easiest pick six of his career. Boy, he had his eyes there the whole time. You'll see him off to the right, and I, you know, you can't underestimate him. I don't think Josh Dobbs ever really feels him or senses him. He's right here and does a good job of just kind of waiting, 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 and then once the ball's in the air, he steps in front of it. And that's the last guy on the field you think is going to drop an interception. He's been dying for one, especially after last week's game against Philly. So Dobbs gets away with one, third down and nine at the 30-yard line. Coming up on the two-minute warning. Caught at the 25, and picking up the first down is Robert Woods. And that takes us to the two-minute warning. It'll be first down from the 20-yard line for Tennessee when we come back. Dallas 10, Tennessee nothing. The first half is winding down. About Demarcus Lawrence. I'm very interested to see what the folks think about Joshua Dobbs' first career start. Ryan Fitzpatrick will be a good guy to weigh in on that. I know that for sure. Meanwhile, you got a first down at the 20-yard line. Titans have two timeouts. The back is Chestnut, and he gets stuffed for a three-yard loss by Dorrance Armstrong, kind of under the radar a little bit, having a great year. But Dorrance Armstrong gets underneath Dennis Daly, and it's just a suddenness and power and quicks where he's able to shoot through this gap right here seen Cowboys a few times get underneath these edge blockers whether it's tight ends or tackles and that time Armstrong just too powerful and quick off the ball second and 12 throw it out here to Haskins and he'll take it to the 19 yard line so it's third down now Nation Wright and who wants to take the timeout is the question right now. Meanwhile, you got an injury timeout because Wright is down. <laughs> it's interesting. Tennessee has two timeouts, but do you want to take them, run the risk of giving Dallas the ball, Absolutely. you know, with enough, enough time? And meanwhile, you know, does Dallas take a timeout themselves and run the risk of, you know, Tennessee getting a first down, a first and goal or a touchdown? Cat and mouse game, you're yep. right. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the clock, if I'm Tennessee, I want that clock to keep moving. Yep. So one reason that Dobbs is playing, and they have to take a chance with him, because they put Willis in, and he played uh, three games this year. And you can take a look at the passing yards, 55 at Houston, 
80 in an overtime game at Kansas City, and then 99 more in the loss to the Texans last week. So already tonight, Dobbs has thrown for 113, which is more than Willis's total in any of those three games. Yeah, and, and I, I think with Willis, he's just a young guy. You know, and, and I think the pieces around him aren't really in place for him to have a chance to have a lot of success. Like I said, he's in that developmental stage. And it got, the difference with Josh Dobbs is he hasn't played a lot of ball himself, but he's been in the league six years. You know, he's been around it, even on the practice squad. He's been around the speed of the game. And I think once he di- was able to digest the playbook, it, He's got a little bit of a better feel and rhythm to what this offense is trying to do. Played under Roethlisberger in Pittsburgh. Backed him up, said, I learned a lot from Ben. Pressure is on. Meanwhile, falling down. The pressure was on. Woods was there. You had Micah Parsons coming into Dobbs' face. He gets it away, and then Woods falls down, and in comes the field goal group. I'll tell you what you just said about Parsons. Pretty good job here by Dobbs to be able to realize, oh, boy, here he comes, a guy I've heard about all week. (laughs) And he delivers that ball, by the way, right on the money. Unfortunately, Woods just lost his footing, or that's a completion in positive yards. So Bullock now to attempt the field goal. 37 yards to try to get him on the board, which he does. Sixty-four seconds to the half, and we're back in 30 seconds. Dad, where do sponsorships come from? You know, son, when a pizza loves a football very much, Uh they become official. And that's what happened when Little Caesars became the official pizza sponsor of the NFL. So what do you say, Timmy? You want to take a bite out of that pizza in slow-mo? I sure do, NFL quarterback Matthew Stafford. That's right, Timmy. Little Caesars is the official pizza sponsor of the NFL. Pizza, pizza. Well, the Titans on the board. You know, you, you get out here tonight and you go, oh, my God, this is an all-time mismatch. Is it going to be a complete rout? This also could have been helmet to helmet when we t- take another look at this thing. Mm-hmm. I'd love to hear Terry's thoughts, not just helmet to helmet, but just any more. Anytime a quarterback gets hit, Terry, everybody holds their breath. Uh-oh, is this going to be a penalty? What do you see there? And, and it's a matter of whether is that forcible contact or not. You know, in real time, the referee didn't think it was. I, I tend to believe it is. Uh, coming at him like that, I do think it should have been a foul for roughing the passer. But it was not, and... Uh... They got the the field goal at the end of that drive. There's Parsons has been all over the place as he is almost every game. Even with that club, it's not slowing him down. That's what Tennessee knew coming in they, against his pass rush. They got five guys that can get after the quarterback and just trying to stay out of those third and obvious passing situations. Dallas has two timeouts. Prescott. Great protection again. Fires and it's broken up up at the 37 yard line. It's Trey Avery and um, Rabel uh, signaling him or singling him out yesterday. Rookie out of Rutgers having a great year. He really is. You know, here he is. This shows you how much trust they have in him. He's out on an island here against a, a, a veteran receiver. It looked like Gallup a little indecisive. Looked like he was going to take it to the outside, but the outside leverage made him kind of bring settle that route down and. Maybe it looked like to me he and Dak not quite on the same page. Prescott, who's 14 of 20, and that's dropped by Brown. Noah Brown up at the 30-yard line. So with Basham putting the heat on that time, third and 10. Talking so much about Dallas and their defensive line and their pressure. Titans reminding us that they're, they're pretty good themselves at being able to get after the quarterback and try to affect the timing. And I think that four stack, even though he made a good throw, he definitely felt the pressure from the backside. And Noah Brown has had a great year uncharacteristically there, just lets the ball go through his hands. Well, third down and 10. Last two plays took nine seconds. Prescott stepping up and he'll be tackled at the 23 yard line. And a flag is down, taken down there by Demarcus Walker, and then Prescott comes 
walking gingerly back to what he thinks will be the huddle if the penalty is against Tennessee. Wait, wait. When Dak went down, looked like he yeah. grabbed oh, onto that knee. Defense number 21. This is a five yard penalty and an automatic first down. That's Roger McCreary, and there were three flags. So that ends that. But meanwhile, this is the last thing you ever want to see happen in a game like this where your quarterback comes away gimpy. Yeah, and Tennessee, a chance to get off the field. McCreary, the rookie against Lamb, and he clearly near the top of that route. A little bit of acting there by Lamb, but it's the right call. He definitely grabbed onto him there and had a defensive hold. Five penalties against Tennessee and none on the Cowboys tonight. And that's caught by Schultz, who takes it up to the 44 yard line. And Dallas will take a timeout, and that stops the clock at 41 seconds. They have one timeout left. And now it's time for the Carfax 4K Sky Cam. Some of the shots we've had a chance to to take a look at. A lot of it has had to do with Dallas's defense and what we've seen on the side by not just Micah Parsons, but Demarcus Lawrence. He's done so many different things. We've seen the hustle. We've seen him be able to affect the run, pressure the quarterback, the awareness to knock that ball away from Dobbs, almost created a turnover. Just a veteran having a great game tonight for that front. As you see, going to the Pro Bowl this year, third time. He's been selected. Moving off from the 43 now. Against the four man rush to the outside goes the pass that's caught there by T.Y. Hilton. So in his second game, meanwhile, the, the Titans are saying keep that clock rolling, but they call him out of bounds. It'll be second down and seven. Hilton now three catches tonight. I think Vrabel's arguing the same thing. Yeah, yeah. For progress. Yep. Dallas just trying to hold on, obviously, to that last time out here with 35 seconds to go. Prescott has time. That's caught. Question is forward progress there for Lamb. Did that net the first down? Going to mark it at the 40, close to the 48. Looks like they're going to mark it a little bit shy. Dallas takes their final timeout with 28 seconds. McCurry made that last tackle. Again, you're out there on an island against C.D. Lamb, and you almost feel that C.D. Lamb has an option to take this whichever way he wants. Works back, and by coming back to the football there, it actually brought him just shy of the first down marker. He, he had at the top of that route a chance to take that outside, inside, and McCreary just kept, kept giving him depth, so he just turns and almost comes up with the first down here. So 28 seconds, going to make it a third and one. They're out of timeouts. Can the Titans hold them? They're going to get the ball. Tennessee will to start the second half. Prescott dancing. He's going to keep it. He's going to get the first down. And he's going to stop the clock by going out of bounds at the 39-yard line into the Tennessee bench. Great heads-up play and awareness here by Dak. They, they had an overload formation to the right, which took most of the defense. Look at this defense. Everybody over here and Dak senses that watch it open up on the left and instead of waiting right away He's like well, that's that twist up front nobody there to spy him He's got enough speed to get good yards try to get him into field goal range. They got to continue to try to work to get out of bounds Almost in range at the moment as Prescott retreats again protection and meanwhile another interception Meyer off to the races. He goes to the 40-yard line. So not only did the defense hold, but can they get close enough for at least a field goal try here? How good is Byard? Watch him right here, manned up with the tight end. Really good job of sensing and anticipating the ball coming out of the hands of Dak Prescott. This guy's done this his whole career. Very opportunistic, great ball skills. Typically, he could play in the middle of the field. Here he matches up with Dalton Schultz and just has his eyes perfectly to anticipate that throw from Dak Prescott and steps in front of it. Beautiful. You know, yeah, Prescott has been so good since he came back. The bugaboo has been the interceptions, right? So two more tonight, plus a lost fumble. Meanwhile, can they get close enough for a field goal attempt? Then can he get out of bounds? Meanwhile, staying inbounds, 
is Burks to the eight yard line. He goes, and now they stop the clock with two seconds. His instincts take over, oh, and the know. clock is ticking, right? He's trying to take it to the house, and they're all the way down to two seconds. If he stayed in bounds, yeah. that was miraculous that he's able to somehow stay in bounds here. Watch again here. How close has he come to going out? Is he? No. Oh, what agree. a job. Meanwhile, there, there's the moment of truth now. He almost <laughs> gets tripped. Hangs on. Meanwhile, you got a field goal attempt here. Chip shot. 29 yards coming up for Randy Bullock. He bangs that through, and that's the way this half ends. And we talked to how could they stay in this game with all these injuries and playing a guy that's never started a game at quarterback, the turnover margin, plus two in the first half. Right. Three takeaways. It's a ball game at the halftime. It's 10 6. Mercedes Benz halftime show next. Final Thursday night game of the season. What's in store next from Nashville? Elliott with a touchdown in eight straight games. And does he make it nine? He does. Look out, and down he goes. And that's the way that once promising drive comes to a halt. Rifles one juggled and then picked off. Kevin Byard. So the Dallas Cowboys on top, but only by a score of 10 6 with the Titans resting almost everybody. Titans. Team record streak, 17 straight games for the first half TD. Didn't get one here, two field goals. Lamb now nine straight games with five or more catches, a team record. He's caught seven so far. Tonight, only 21 yards on the ground for Tennessee. Of course, they're minus Derrick Henry tonight. And Dak Prescott turned the ball over three times, two picks, and a fumble tonight. And that's really the... Um, the essence and the story of why this game is so close. For Cowboys fans, the, the, the concern this week was all the buzz and talk coming out of Nashville about resting players and the Cowboys coming off a big win against Philly. Would they would they lose focus? Would they, would they take this game for granted as an easy win? And a little lethargic, just not the typical execution you'd expect to see from Mike McCarthy and the Cowboys. Kind of interested to see how they respond here in the second half. Healy talked to Mike McCarthy. We'll hear from him shortly as we replay that. In fact, we'll do it right now. Well, Coach, after those three turnovers, what did you tell your offense at the half? Well, I think the biggest thing is, you know, stay focused on what's right in front of us. Can't worry about what's behind us. And, uh, you know, just got to pick some things up. A lot of good things going, time of possession. We're getting stops or third down uh, situation where we want to be. We just got to get these get this 30 points or 30 minutes and then knock this thing out. With all that in mind, how do you rate your priorities in the second half? Oh, we just got to play. Uh, we just got to play our game. I mean, yeah. I mean, we're not. We're not changing anything. We, we're not drawing up new plays. We got to pick our urgency up. Just, uh, just, you know, got to be more precise. Thank you. All right, Mike McCarthy talking about that first half. Second half begins here with Hassan Haskins picking up three yards. It'll be second down and seven. And you would have said to us, you know, that this team starting a, a quarterback in his sixth year in this this league for the first time. And you have 24 yards rushing. Do you think that you're still in the game? I would say, and especially a team that relies on their physicality and running the ball. But that's what turnovers can do. No you know? question. There's three takeaways by the defense. One at the end of the first half, making it a four-point game. Meanwhile, picking up a hard yard here is Haskins. It'll be third down. Such a tough ask for Haskins, really getting his first chance to show what he's capable of doing is as a back with Derrick Henry down with with this offensive line and Dallas essentially has come into this game and said listen let's make let's make Josh Dobbs and his passing game beat us we, we are going to load up and take this running game out and make Dobbs who's been in Nashville for eight days show us that he can beat us meanwhile he has three completions of 30 or more yards to three different receivers third and six
Ten Parsons in on the blitz. The time of that pass is dropped there by Burks. Parsons put the pressure on. Burks had it and dropped it. Well, 11 against 11 on third downs has become quite a theme. He gets enough time here, but it's another drop on a third down. We saw one earlier to Robert Woods. It was a well-thrown ball. Here's the pressure from Parsons on that blind side. You knew that he's going to give Dennis Daly more than he could handle. You can see the frustration by Dobbs throwing a ball like that on third down under that duress. That should be a conversion. Three or four drops already tonight. Meanwhile, the punt here. By Stonehouse to the 17. Turpin. It's tackled up at the 27, and a flag is down back at the 19-yard line. So this will come back. Part of the run back anyway. And the Cowboys will start from deep in their own territory. Sean Hockley and the gang getting it squared away. During the return, illegal block in the back, receiving team number one. The penalties have to distance to the goal. First down, Dallas. Kelvin Joseph. Yeah, not exactly how McCarthy wants to see this second half start. Miscues for the story in the first half. This is just a fumble, and the big fella, Tart, picks it up. That was one of the turnovers. And you can see this, just a heads-up play by Byard, the way he's able to take that away from Hendershot, and then he jumps one. Gets his second pick of the night for not only himself, but of course for Dak Prescott. It was the first penalty on the Cowboys tonight. Little flip here to Elliott. Starts to stumble and can barely get back to the line of scrimmage before Jack Gibbons, the rookie out of Minnesota, makes the tackle second down. You don't have your starting middle linebackers. We keep talking about all these guys that are not playing. Watch the job right here of being able to get off of that block and then be able to make the play. It's one thing that stalemate at the center makes the play as well. Elliott again. Tackled about four yards shy of the first. You know, you're talking about don't have the middle backer. You don't have Zach Cunningham. He's on IR. You don't have Jeffrey Simmons. That a great <laughs> You don't have Danico Autry. <laughs> right. I mean, you're talking about all the guys that are missing on offense. The defense is just as banged up. Bud Dupree, Dylan Cole, yep, Imani Hooker. Dupree went on IR. Third down and four. Titans fans loving it. Can they stop him? No, they can't. And the catch made out to the 30-yard line goes Michael Gallup to pick up a first down. And the linebackers walked up and then dropped. Creates a nice opening here for Gallup, but he's got to work to get open and get off of Avery. Good job there on third down. Dak Prescott enough time, but got that ball out pretty quickly there to pick up the first. The rookie Malik Davis in the backfield. He has the ball, gets tackled from behind. Nice play there by Mario Edwards, short game, second and nine. It's in the typical Mike a Mike Frable coach team to just kind of bouncing off of guardrails and hanging around 10 to 6. Got a bunch of backups out there, ugly in the game up. You know what I mean? Just find the way. This is a scratching, clawing team <laughs> that very infrequently looks pretty. They're not into style points. That pass is incomplete. You got the flag here because you got Noah Brown going down. And you saw the contact from Roger McCreary to the displeasure of the crowd. Passive interference, defense number 21. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. It's first down. I, I really think these college corners that come up that are way, uh, used to getting away with some things in, in the college game, you come up here and you get your hands on these receivers and you throw a guy into the sideline, you nudge him even, and they're going to call that. So I still think as a rookie he's, he's adjusting to the game and been called a few times tonight on these pass interference and holding calls. Second round pick out of Auburn. Keep it on the ground. No gain. Stuffed at the line of scrimmage that time. It's Gibbons again making the tackle on Malik Davis, rookie on rookie. Well, anytime the ball is going to go to the outside, you're always concerned about the potential cutback. Good job of being disciplined on the backside of this defense there by a couple different defenders. Basham there, and then of course again, 
You see the game that Jack Gibbons continues to have with his awareness. Under pressure, gets the pass away, it's caught. And a nice move out to the 48 by Jake Ferguson, rookie out of Wisconsin, setting up a third down and two. That was just a matter of Dak Prescott seeing that McCreary had come on that corner blitz, and once he saw it, he had to get the ball out quickly. Gibbons, by the way, who's got a really good field of reading things, if he's not out there, there's a convoy there in front of Ferguson for a big game. Gibbons having a, a nice night. Not only a rookie free agent out of Minnesota. Third down and two from the 48-yard line, and Elliott will pick up the first down. Kept the legs moving, takes it across the 50, first down at the Tennessee 48-yard line. Uh, the big fella, Tyler Smith, when in doubt, you get behind this rookie because of his power. Connor McGovern, the guard, helps out as well, but it's a heck of a battle with Mario Edwards and Tyler Smith there on that third down. Tyler Smith, first round pick, played at Tulsa. And starting to stumble as he takes the handoff, a flag is down, is Elliott. Flag thrown in the offensive backfield. Holding offense number 63. It's a 10 yard penalty. It's first down. On the center, Tyler Biotish. He's up against Jaden Peavy, who's up this week. Another big body there. See Biotish in the middle, loses leverage and has to grab onto that shoulder pad jersey. Easy for the official to actually see that from behind. They get behind the sticks. First and 20 now from the 42. Little draw here. I tell you, Titans, they're doing a nice job up front for a team that's minus, you know, half their starters. Yeah, I mean, Tart, Walker, Edwards, Kevin Strong, they're rotating a lot of bodies. We mentioned Jaden Peavy, who's out there playing. Second and 19. And that's incomplete. Intended for Noah Brown. A recovering on the play. It'll be third down and 19. That ball may have been tipped there. It looked like yeah. Kevin Strong, 97, right yeah. there. Yep. Affects the ball. I mean, it's still there for Noah Brown to catch, but definitely made it much tougher. Coming to him almost like a knuckleball there. Well, can they stop him here on third down? Give up, give up a first down, six of eight on third down. Meanwhile, Prescott steps away, flings one deep downfield. All kinds of contact going on down there. And a flag thrown to the three-yard line. And that's Avery who gets caught up with Michael Gallup. The penalties continue to stack oh. up for Mike Vrabel. I mean, this is third, and we saw a big conversion last week, right, with Dallas when they when they converted with T.Y. Hilton. But this time, it's a big pass interference, third and forever. You get lost in coverage with Avery. It's the right call. You may not like it. You may think, oh, my gosh, are you kidding me? But when you get lost in coverage downfield and you grab onto a receiver, it's the right call. That is a 51-yard penalty. 51 yard. <laughs> oh. So the current drive, 83 yards with 51 on that play. And a first and goal now from the six. Wide open. Schultz for the touchdown. So from third and 19, with Prescott rolling and throwing. In effect, the prayer gets the penalty, and then Schultz for the touchdown. Yeah, Avery had the penalty, and then he's matched up here, man-to-man -man, right across from this tight end, and he gets his eyes in the backfield. It's an ultimate no-no, right? But Dak Prescott, he's going to first and ten. Great call by Kellen Moore. Boot out the other, the, the backside, and Avery peeking into the backfield is, is left out of position, and an easy throw for Dak for the touchdown. Little juggle, but no problem. Maher with the extra point. 
And with 8.48 to go in the third quarter. There's your pass interference. There's your big call right there. 51 yards. That cost them 17 to 6. Cowboys. Well, Mike Brable had a few things to talk about, especially with Avery on that sideline. That penalty, the penalties have just killed this team tonight. Seven for 99 yards. Yeah, the critical times, especially at these third downs when they have a chance to get the, the Cowboys off the field. This is McCreary on this drive. And then Avery where he just gets lost and he locks up with Gallup. Remember, this drive started on their own 11-yard line. Yeah. And they pick up those, those two pass interference calls. And they almost they almost got to Prescott on that third and 19, but he kept it alive. After the 31 on the run back here. Let's look at Micah Parsons night. Remember when he was trying to get on the field late? No, no problem. Able to get inside, make a play against the run when they run away from him. Here they match him up against the center. Even when he doesn't get a sack, he can impact the play by forcing the quarterback to get rid of the ball. And then the ball gets loose. And uh, without that left hand, he secures it with the right hand. Can't use that club to bring in that, that fumble recovery. What a Haskins is the running back. Haskins gets it and gets tackled as he reaches the line of scrimmage. Anthony Barr, the longtime Viking, coming over, makes the tackle. Can you hear him saying, can, can, can? Sees a look that he wants, wants to get out of a play here. And boy, how about the job here? pretty easy to make a play when nobody comes up to get you to the second level we all thought the mismatch all week would be the Titans offensive line against this defensive front done okay done okay but have had some moments where they just can't deal with the athletic ability Dobbs flips it out here and sliding to a stop there he's swimming you know people were asking the Dobbs about you know the playbook and all of that. He said, hey, in, my, in college, I had a thermal exam and a heat transfer exam on the same day. Next day, I had a compressional flow exam in two days. Right? I, I meant to circle back to you on that <laughs> and ask you what exactly. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> I just nodded my head. Okay, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Thermo. What, uh, Whatever it was. Yeah. But his parents took him when he was seven years old to the Kennedy Space Center. He fell in love with aeronautical engineering and that's what he got his degree in the straight A's third and six rolling right firing and it is Burks does he hold on to it he does or does he not is the question now he does hold on well, this is how you handle Micah Parsons and Demarcus Lawrence you roll the pocket move that launch point he's very comfortable on the on the move and a good job of making that throw. And quickly, no huddle now. An 11 yard pickup by Haskins. He takes it down there for a first down. Now Parsons looked like he wasn't getting off the field. I don't know off if he. Side. Defense number 96. The penalty declined as the play results in the first down. Meanwhile, Gallimore was the guy called for offside. And Gallimore was coming on. Parsons was going off. And the heads up. Dobbs gets that ball snapped quickly. Right. First down from the 34. On the ground to the outside, trying to cut it back and picking up about three. Right. Makes the tackle. So Dobbs gets drafted by Pittsburgh. 17 through 19. Goes to the Jaguars briefly. Then he goes back to the Steelers. Then this year he was with the Browns. He was backing up Jacoby Brissett until Deshaun Watson became active. He goes to the Lions as on the practice squad for a couple of weeks and now here for nine days. Yeah, and, and, and how about his reference to us? Because when we did the Cleveland game early that year against the Steelers, he said, yeah, hey, good to see you guys. Remember seeing you earlier in the year. You know, we didn't even talk to him. It's just an awareness of... Give you an idea of how he thinks. Very aware. Meanwhile, he throws, and that's thrown away. It'll be third down. Kaylee, what you got? 
Al, you mentioned that Josh Dobbs' parents had to rescue his car from the Detroit airport. So we have got to give them some credit for the journey they took to get here. Yesterday, they left their home in Atlanta at 5 a.m. They had to turn the car around on the way to the airport because they forgot Josh's spare set of keys at home. And then airline delays actually worked in their favor and an hour-long delay meant they made their flight to Detroit, got there at 11 a.m. They swear Josh gave them good instructions to find the car in the parking garage, but said it was a struggle. They got the car and then they made it to Nashville at 9 p.m. last night. Forty dollars a day cost them about 320, 320 to get it out of the parking lot. Haskins to the 25 yard line. Fourth down and Dobbs looking over and it's fourth and two. Wants to huddle up and let's see what the play call is. Yeah, the crowd's booing because they didn't throw the football here on, on third and seven, but they're clearly thinking about this as four down territory. Dallas is playing at Tampa too, meaning the middle linebackers bailing at the snap of the ball. They wanted to get positive yards. They picked up five. Now you got a real shot here, fourth and two. Bunch three receivers to the left. Can they keep the drive alive? And leaning forward, it looks like Haskins may have picked it up. The official comes in. He spots it right there. They have it. And they will. Now, Hassan Haskins had an incredible year last year at Michigan. Demarcus Lawrence gets inside and makes the play, but that gives you an idea of how powerful a runner Haskins can be. Boom, he meets him behind the line of scrimmage, but he fights to get that first down and comes up with a two yards. 6 2, 228, scored 20 touchdowns last year, most ever in a season at Michigan. And that's saying something. It sure is. First down from the 24. He has it again. Angles his way to the 19 yard line with four and a half to go in the third behind a LaRaven Clark block. Just give you an idea how he, he played linebacker wow. at Michigan, too. I mean, it gives you an idea about the mentality of Haskins and how he runs the, the football. And uh, you could see him throughout his career. I don't know if he'll be the featured guy in the NFL, but he's got a place to be that other guy, right, in a tandem to be a physical thumper for an offense. Especially with a guy like Derrick Henry out in front of him. With the yin and yang. And meanwhile, there's no gain here for Julius Chestnut. Setting up another third down, third and six. Yeah, they, they hope, I mean, at some point, I mean, Derrick Henry, seven years, over, you know, 300 carries this year. He, he's going to need a little bit of help down the line. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, without a doubt. And, I think that the Titans have always tried to find that guy, right? You know, whether it's been a, another power back or a guy that's very, very different, you know, more of a third down type of back. But Haskins can run through a lot of arm tackles. Third and six. Dobbs fires and making the grab is Woods. Does he get in? He does. Right covered on the play. It's a first down. How about left hash all the way to the far sideline? Look to your far right. Woods, who dropped the third down pass, has a soft corner. Great throw to the outside. Puts this ball out in front with a receiver he just met of a week ago. <laughs> really well-thrown football there. Out in front of Woods, gets the two feet down, and another first down, and another conversion. Still trying to put names and places <laughs> and faces together. Jonathan Ward is now in the game at running back. Send him out into the pattern. And the pass to Ward, he goes down, he makes the catch, he gets up, and is taken out of bounds. Well, well, well. I mean, I, if there's one question I think he's pretty much answered tonight is who starts next week in Jacksonville. What do you think? I think 11 does. You know, I, I, I think there's, there's a different vibe, a different feel to this offense. And, and I think the most important thing, and I think Malik Willis, he may have a bright future, but at this stage of his career, the difference is the ball's getting out faster. The ball's getting out on time in their passing game, and I think that's six years of experience, not playing, but just being around this league that lets him be more familiar with the scheme. I mean, here's a guy, again, we mentioned it at the top, six years in the league, you know, practice squad and backing up uh, and inactive in Pittsburgh a lot through those years. He threw, as meanwhile, you got the timeout here for the um, injured player who's J. Ron. Yeah, a couple guys. Yeah, Curse and Hooker. Yeah, both of them. Curse and Malik Hooker. 
two of those three safeties that Dan Quinn relies on so heavily. And they just sent uh, Nishan right into the medical tent. Back up corner. You got Hooker. Haven't called uh, Deron Blaine's name tonight. The rookie out of Fresno State who has five interceptions this season. And he's done a really good job of taking yeah. it, really stepping in for Kelvin Joseph, especially last week. They play uh, him as a rookie. They play Bland on the inside at that nickel spot, but also play him outside opposite of Diggs. If you don't mention a guy's name, that means he's normally doing a pretty good job in coverage, right? <laughs> <laughs> They're not throwing at him. He's been a big surprise for yeah. the Cowboys. Meanwhile, second down six. Clock ticking down to two minutes left in the third. Play action. Hanging in. Fires and incomplete. Tried to thread it in there to Burks. Well covered on the play. He had three white shirts around him. Third and six. You, you get pressure here again from Micah Parsons. Hassan Haskins actually tries to help out here. But what a dangerous throw right into the teeth of this. You see Haskins helps and allows him to step up. Gets that ball off, but man, he put this ball into some traffic. I mean, three different Cowboys there. And somehow it still got its way, got it through there to Burks. Third and six. So a guy through 17 passes in six years has already thrown 23 tonight. Here comes the 24th. Gets it away and caught by Woods for the touchdown. My dad looked like, hey, we've seen this before. <laughs> Tell you what, I, I think there's confusion on the back end. Watch Donovan Wilson communicate. Motion goes away, motion comes back. I think you have two guys back there. Remember, we just had the just had an injury there. We had a couple safeties come off. Maybe miscommunication on that back end with that motion that gives Woods a chance to be wide open for the touchdown. Great point. Randy Bullock for the point after. Well, 2.04 to go in the third. If you're just tuning in, yep, no misprint. Seven on Sports Talk. Tune in for the big sports stories of the day. Sports Talk, all sports all day, only on Prime Video. Nissan Stadium, Nashville, Tennessee. 17-13 Dallas on top, late third. Start this next drive from the 25-yard line. It's been fun to watch Tyron Smith. What, a, what an incredible story. You know, in fact, his rookie year in 11, he played right tackle. Last 10 years, one of the best at left tackle. Look at the difference in technique. You're stepping out with that outside foot. You're, you're, you're using, throwing your hands, usually that upfield hand. He's adjusted back to that, that early part of his career and doing a heck of a job. They didn't want to affect the continuity with the rookie Tyler Smith and Connor McGovern. So when he came back from his injury, where he pulled it, the hamstring off of his bone, he was willing, first guy to say, hey, let me go back to the right side so we can keep that continuity on the left side. And he's doing a marvelous job for the Cowboys. 12th year in the league. Meanwhile, Davis gets stuck behind the line of scrimmage. You know, I was talking to Andrew Whitworth, part of our crew last night, who's been a great left tackle, retired. Of course, there are teams that are calling Andrew right now. The Bengals, <laughs> probably. And we were talking about, he said, if I could play left tackle, I would sort of think about it. Really? But, but, but <laughs> we said that, but I don't want to put him on the spot here. But he said, right tackle, I, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't move the right yeah. tackle. Yeah. It's like sometimes it's really impressive to see corners bounce from the left to the right. right. Just very different opposite technique. Prescott deep downfield and incomplete coverage is very good that time on T.Y. Hilton. Step for step with him that time. Was McCreary to be third and ten? How about McCreary, we're talking about Tyron Smith bouncing left to right. McCreary is a rookie with these injuries in the back end. He's become one of the guys that they really have to rely on. They could play outside, try to match up out on the outside. They put him there at nickel because of all the injuries that they've had there. Just showing you a lot of versatility as a young player out of Auburn. Yeah, missing Christian Fulton, who would be a, a starting corner tonight. He's out as well. Third down and ten. Rush five, Prescott 
Tries to slip out the side door. That's caught, breaking a tackle, picking up the first down, and a whole lot more is T.Y. Hilton. So another big third and long conversion. The other, of course, came on a penalty, but this time that's good for 27 yards. See, that's the next thing for T.Y. Hilton. It's one thing to make a catch down the sideline on third and 30 and everybody go crazy. This is where you see him maybe impacting this team on third down. An underneath route, makes a catch, breaks a tackle, shows you what he can still do as a wide receiver. Got away from Andrew Adams. Final minute of the quarter. Malik Davis. Maybe nothing but a bunch of traffic. Hey, what, man, it is again tough sledding up there. Oh, we got a guy down. Looks like the center Biotish. It is. So injury time out here with 35 seconds left in the third. He needs assistance coming off the field, and that is going to cause a completely restructured line. First, we'll look at the injury and how this happened. The dreaded roll up. Mm. See it all the time with his offensive lineman. Put yeah. underneath from the backside. Don't even see it coming. So, what happens now? They're going to move McGovern from guard to center. They bring Jason Peters, 71, into the game, the 19 year veteran. No question, a Hall of Famer someday. Going to move Tyler Smith from left tackle to left guard. Meanwhile, they don't have to run a play here. Until the fourth quarter, so they'll let the clock expire. And that takes us to the ultimate frame in a manner of small, bar, <laughs> barring overtime. <laughs> barring overtime. 17 13, end of three. Back with more from Nashville after these messages. Tennessee, tonight's aerial coverage presented by Auto Trader. Al Michaels, Kirk Kersey, Kaylee Harton start the fourth. Second and ten after Biotis leaves. Restructured offensive line. Pass is caught. And picking up a few extra yards after contact that time. Flag is thrown in the offensive backfield. Dalton Schultz. And there's a, a, a sorry sight for any Cowboy fan right now as your center. Biotis goes back on a cart. Need to see that. That left side reshuffled. And that's where pressure came. There's going to be a late hit on Dak Prescott. <laughs> Meanwhile, that's Monty Rice with roughing the passer here, they, la landing on him here. And they, they, they tested that left side, and when you finish these sacks, this is what they look for. Terry Coaches is up on this. It's not that. It's how he drives him into the ground that they're trying to take away. Right, Terry? Absolutely, Kirk. Penalties used tonight. There's the disparity, 114. Yards, you have 51 on that pass interference. Only two cold. Meanwhile, Rice is trying to not land on him, but gets caught yep. at a different yep. angle. From the 26 yard line on first down here to the outside. Nice little run here by Malik Davis. Stopped there by Rice and Avery. Again, before the break, we told you what they did. So you move McGovern to center in place of Biotish. You bring Peters in at left tackle. And you take Tyler Smith and you make him your left guard at the moment. And, and by the way, how that impacts communication. Tyler Smith is a guy that could play guard or center. And this is what you rep during the week. In case you get into these emergencies, you're able to flip guys around. Second and four. Deep drop. Prescott spins away. Avoids the sack and then gets taken down at the 19-yard line after a minimal gain by Tierre. It's hard. And here's the left side right now. I mean, Tyler Smith at left guard trying to adjust. Just take a look at this. Watch the pressure get to the outside of Peters, who's been around this league for a long time. Edwards beats him. And then Smith was a little bit hesitant. Should I go inside or should I go outside? So the continuity and the communication right now, work in progress, even though they're very gifted and very capable. Tennessee testing that communication. Big defensive stop here. Can they hold him to a field goal attempt on third and two? They swing it out to the outside and getting the first down that time is Malik Davis. Needed two, picked up a couple of more. Two minutes into the quarter, first down. Noah Brown's route 
forced Monty Rice, who is man-to-man, -to, -man, to have to go a little bit wider than he would have liked to. He wasn't able to get underneath the route, so by taking a longer path, Dak just dumped it off to the, to the very mobile and athletic Malik Davis, and he's able to easily get that first down. Meanwhile, Elliott comes back into the game. Zeke tonight, 14 carries, but only 32 yards. Fake it to him. To the outside they go. C.D. Lamb to the 10-yard line. Lamb now with eight catches on 10 targets. This Tennessee defense has been asked to do a lot tonight with a lot of guys that typically don't play a lot of football. But I don't know if there's a bigger sequence of plays coming up than right now. You're down four. You're into this fourth quarter. You're giving your team a chance to hang in there. you got to try to force his field goal down here in the red zone. Second and seven. Prescott with plenty of time. Fires. Touchdown. Caught. Leaping grab by Dalton Schultz. Dalton Schultz. Terrific year. Seven catches tonight. And the TD here. How about Jason Peters? Now you said he's 40 years old. 19 years protecting that blind side clean pocket and when you give number four a clean pocket look at the location of that ball right over top of the safety Andrew Adams into Schultz's hands who's so dangerous in the red zone for the touchdown for the Cowboys and Schultz 6 5 Adams is 5 11 that's two touchdown catches tonight and you got the injured Titan down in the end zone. And that is Adams. So they work on him with 12 minutes to go in the fourth. This look at the road to the Super Bowl is brought to you by State Farm. Best chance to win it all. Very little change from last week. Bills, Chiefs 19%, Eagles are now 17, 49ers 11, Bengals are 11%, and the Cowboys uh, at 7%. They moved up in the, into that. Uh, that a group of teams from last week with their win against Philly and ironically in the AFC the only two AFC teams up there Bengals and Bills playing Cincinnati on Monday night mm -hmm. be a big one. Meanwhile there's Adams who got beaten on that last play for the touchdown by Schultz on a cart going back to the locker room Maher comes in league's leading scorer tacks on one more to make it 24 to 13 and let's check in with Kaylee. Al, tonight's Walter Payton Man of the Year nominees are tremendous leaders for their teams and communities. Jack Prescott there, his Faith Fight Finish Foundation helps others find strength through adversity with a focus on cancer research, mental health and suicide prevention. And Derek Henry is committed to leveling the playing field for disadvantaged youth here in Nashville and in his hometown of Uly, Florida through his two all foundation. Thank you, Kelly. You know, Prescott, we watched that back for a long time. And when he got the job, he gets picked in the fourth round back in 60. Tony Romo is going to be the quarterback. Kellen Moore is going to be the backup. And he's going to be the third guy, probably inactive, right? right. So Kellen Moore gets hurt in August. So now Dak is going to be the backup to Romo who gets hurt. And who's the starting quarterback? And we watched him evolve through the years. Now he's candidate for man of the year, and he is as respected as anybody in that locker room total package and one of the great leaders in the entire NFL in my opinion and we all wondered how a Dobbs do first start and I you know, in my opinion he's recognized things and made some really good throws look at that awareness movement in the pocket by a little bit of time saw that safety coming down accuracy to receivers he really hasn't had a lot of time with only being with his team for eight days gives him a chance there with that throw his first touchdown of his career Robert Woods quickly handed him that football for a great memory and he's trying to get his team now back into this game down 10. Any more magic here you got a little trick play a little flip here to Burks and Burks out past the 40 to the 46 yard line. Goes Traylon Burks, their number one pick. Great blocks downfield. You know, when you call play like that, it's slow developing. You need receivers, you need tight ends, you need blocks out on the perimeter. 
You get Dallas out of position. Burke shows you even for his size he can go. But look at Swain downfield. Good blocks. Robert Woods trying to help out. 20-yard gain up to the 45 they go. Little flip. Oh, and then the pass is juggled and incomplete and could have been picked there. Haskins could not handle it. Second down and 10. Best thing that happened there is he dropped the ball. Mm -hmm. Jaron Curse was ready to light him up, and that would have either been ball up in the air or a significant loss and getting behind the stick. So the drop works out there for Tennessee. Good awareness again by Curse, who was out, and good to see he and Hooker now back in the lineup. Dobbs 14 of 25, so that's 56%. 188 yards. Hangs in the pocket. Underneath, wide open. And close to a first down goes Haskins before he's taken down by Bland. First down. And it, again, going back to your question about next week, this is it. This is an example. You don't have to throw it always 30, 40 yards downfield. Cl clear everybody out. Just check it down. But the ball's getting out fast before the pressure gets to him. We've not seen that within this offense since Tannehill has been down. It's just a simple check down. Give it to a big athletic running back that can run through tackles and give your chance to, for a first down. Meanwhile, that's the rookie Sam Williams, second round pick out of Mississippi, who needs the attention here. I love doing that promo. You do. Fact, you have all year. Loves it as well. I mean, one, two, two chains, you know, preempts us. There's our he, man. He, he did his own promo this week. <laughs> Get to the final week of the year, he said. Got to stay tuned. And then he gave you a shout-out for all I the love, love you've I given him all love year. It, man. Deep downfield. Coverage is good. Crowd, of course, wants a flag. They don't get one. Intended for Burks. Covered there by Wright. I'd love to hear what Terry thinks about this because Wright does have his hand on him as he's running downfield. I don't know at the end of the when the ball gets to him, Terry, what do you think of this right here? The, the both of them kind of feeling each other as they're running the route there. Pulls him. Oh, he gr he grabs, grabs his arm end. just before the ball gets in. This should have been a foul for defensive pass interference. Mm -hmm. He can only get one arm up. It's a foul. Terry, I think that's your first shot there on camera. All these weeks of wearing that tie. You look great, bud. We put him on camera because he wore the tie. <laughs> Second and ten. And that pass is caught at the 40-yard line. Robert Woods makes that grab. It'll be third down and five. And down 11, getting close to 10 minutes to go in this game. You, you, not in field goal territory right now. I'm sure Mike Vrabel is thinking about, depending on what happens here, he's, they need a first down. They, they need a touchdown on this driver. They need to at least get into field goal range. Probably two more downs here to get this first. He just took a look at the wristband. Has not done that often tonight. Third down and five. Up tight on coverage. Extra man coming. Gets it away. And an extra rusher caused him to get rid of it in a hurry as Bland that time came in. Fourth down. Yeah, they, they, we I recognize that they're up tight. You wonder if they're going to bring it and they actually bring it to his blind side. He never felt it. Never saw it. One of the few mistakes that we've seen from Dobbs not recognize it nobody in the backfield able to pick that up and of course the crowd reacting to him getting brought down very different than what we saw earlier tonight there's the fourth down play so fourth and five and meanwhile with Parsons coming across the line but you've got a full start, start instead offense, number 71 five yard penalty so instead of a what would have been a first down on an offside by the defense, you got Dennis Daly creating a fourth and ten now. He sees 11 out there, so he starts to jump the gun to try to get out there. Just the threat again. What does Parsons do? How does he impact the game? It's not just the sacks. He forces quarterbacks many times to get rid of the ball before he likes to. He makes offensive linemen jump the gun like that. Well, now, now you've got Ryan Stonehouse. They bring him out on a fourth and ten. Turpin is back. Stone has averaging 48 yards per boot tonight. This one will bounce just across the goal line for a touchback.
Here's the NFC playoff picture right now. Phillies in. Minnesota in. North champion. San Fran in. West champion. South to be determined right now. Tampa Bay is on top. Cowboys are in. We'll see what seed they wind up with right now. It looks like five. Giants in Washington right now would be in at the moment. You got Seattle, you got Detroit, you got Green Bay, Carolina, and New Orleans are all still alive. So the Cowboys could be the number one seed. How? They win the next two tonight and next week. Um, and Washington, Philly loses their final two. Minnesota and San Francisco each lose one of the next two. Not likely, but who knows? It's the NFL. Here's Elliott, who's down at the line of scrimmage. We don't know what the seedings are going to be. We just know it's going to be an absolute war to try to get out of the NFC and get to the Super Bowl. Well, there's Biotis. He went out. Now the question is for how long you got Tyler Biotis. He's got a boot on that right leg and foot. But and back, really, back out on the side. Really line. altered the entire offensive line. No question. That whole the center and left side. Prescott rolling, buying time, firing, open court into Tennessee territory. C.D. Lamb. And that one is good for 34 yards, his ninth grab of the night. So watch this. This is like a levels concept going to the right. So you watch C.D. Lamb here. You're thinking that he's going to run this out to the right. He ends up bringing it back to the left. So no huddle here. Fires into traffic and threads the needle. To Michael Gallup. He's tackled at the 31 yard line. Something Kellen Moore likes to sprinkle in is tempo. He told me this week that one of the things that's funny, these college players come into the NFL. He said, We go tempo once in a while. He said, Sometimes we execute better because the quarterback ran that in, high, in college. The, most of these offensive skill players, they're used to, to going tempo. And they play sometimes even more relaxed in that kind of setting. Cowboys are stepping on the gas. I think they're saying enough already, you know? Yeah. Should have put these guys away a long time ago. Elliott. So the Titans did a good job hanging in a lot longer than most people thought. Yeah, and, and after not converting, I think the Cowboys knew, hey, we got them on the ropes. Let's, let's knock them out right here. Mm -hmm. And I love that route and, and the execution of that last throw with C.D. Lamb looking like he's selling it to the right. Puts his foot, comes back to the left, perfectly timed, and another good throw there by Dak Prescott, who I know he had the two picks, but has put together a pretty good night. 271 yards for him, two TDs, two interceptions, second and seven. Hangs in there, but they get to him. And sacked at the 41 yard line, you got Tier Tart. He's slow to get up. Holding that right calf, but he gets in there for the sack. <laughs> and that's trying to help him. He says, no, no, not, not quite yet. Watch McCreary to the far right, 21, actually drops in coverage. He, they end up doubling Lamb, and Dak Prescott was locked in right there. He wanted to throw it, and by the time he saw McCreary, the big man Tart was able to get in there along with Walker to clean it up. Big for, night, big night for the nose tackle. Yeah, big, a big guy, but plays with good leverage and quickness. I think he's doing a better job this year, Tart. Hopefully he's going to be okay, but he's done a better job this year just using his hands and getting off of blocks. So the big story tonight, those penalties, three huge ones, second and nine here, and then the gigantic one there at 51 yards on what was a third down and a mile, and the roughing call there. So Tart comes off the field. Meanwhile, third down and 15 now. Swing it outside and working his way for a nice gain is C.D. Lamb, and that will take him up and over 100 yards tonight. Well, very close anyway, 99 after a 10-yard gain to the 27. How about that play? I mean, you, you're, you know, you're up by 11, chance to go up by 14. You're out of field goal range. You flip it out there with the hopes of some yards after the catch, and that's exactly what C.D. Lamb gives you, and now you got a legitimate shot here for this field goal.
Maher in his 10th season. Kicking as well as ever. Brian Anger to hold it. Next gen stats say powered by AWS. That would have been good from 46. Bangs it through. They make it a two touchdown differential, a 27 to 13. Chairman, board of directors, owner of the uh, Tennessee Titans. Of course, her father, Bud Adams, one of the original founders of the American Football League back in 1960 with the Houston Oilers. And the kick will bound out of bounds, which means they'll get the ball up at the 40-yard line. Check in with Kaylee. Hey, Al, negotiations are moving forward to get the Titans' new stadium built. The deal isn't done, but last week, Nashville's Metro Council approved the $2.1 billion term sheet. This proposed stadium here would be enclosed with a high-tech translucent roof. It's similar to the one at SoFi. It would seat approximately 60,000 fans. And these renderings, they were created by the same architecture firm that designed Allegiant Stadium in Vegas. Yeah, it'll be very interesting because, I mean, this is a stadium that's it's an older stadium. Going to play the Music City Bowl here in a couple of days. Move from Houston. They spent one year in Memphis. There's the area where it's going to be built adjacent to the uh, current stadium. One year at Vanderbilt and then came in here in, in 99. Meanwhile, you got the pass for a very short game there taken down by Burks. To the line they go in a hurry. I moved here in 2011, and I've never seen a city change more than Nashville from 2011 to where we are now, and about to be in 2023. The growth, especially in the city, mm -hmm. and this city, I think, desperately wants a new facility. Oh, and needs one. Meanwhile, intercepted at the 40 yard line, avoiding the sack, getting away, and Nation Wright comes up with the pick. He did, watch, watch him come able to come off of this route. And there's, there's the work that you're seeing from Josh Dobbs to be able to try to find time to be able to make this throw. But Wright does a really good job. Again, without Joseph now, who they seem to have kind of moved more to special teams, Wright and, and especially Deron Bland have become the two corners that kind of mix back and forth at nickel and at corner. And there, his length really pays off as he climbs the ladder at 6'4 to come up with that interception. Well, that could be the kill shot and start using some of the clock here. His first career interception. Meanwhile, Elliott can stop at the line of scrimmage. We're going to keep a couple of numbers in mind 13 and a half and 40 and a half. I don't normally give you fractions. But do you know what I'm talking about? I, I think I do. Okay. I, I do, actually. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm mesmerized by <laughs> there it. There you go. With the consistency. A lot of folks out there know what I'm talking about. Meanwhile, takeaways. Most in 21, most in 22, 32, leading the league again. Second Dan, and 10. Dan Quinn has a defense that from time to time will give up plays, but it's an attacking style. The sacks and the turnovers have been their strength all year. Well, Prescott. Avoids the sack and then broken up at the last minute. Nice play by McCreary denying C.D. Lamb. Kaylee, on to you. Al, Dan Quinn created a takeaway wall in the defensive meeting room back in Dallas. He posts a signed photo of every guy with one. Deron Bland told me he and Trayvon Diggs stars the takeaway wall this season. Tell each other anytime the ball is in the air, it is ours. Well, Dan Quinn, of course, uh, coached in the Super Bowl with Atlanta. And then uh, came over here when the Cowboys needed to revamp that defense and has done a heck of a job. Well, they've had three coordinators in four years, and now having him back-to-back -back years has developed a much better group that understands the scheme. Third and ten. Flag is thrown here as Noah Brown could not come up with it. Holding. Offense number 73. The penalties decline. It's fourth down. That's well, on Tyler Smith. All right. So uh, thought that the Cowboys would start to take a bunch of time off the clock, but they didn't. I think as you move forward, if you're a Dallas fan, I'm sure Dallas media they're going to talk to Mike McCarthy. Want to find out how serious the injury is to, to uh, Biotish. Sure. 
and then what this means depending on how serious it is for the future because you know you move Connor McGovern into center and, and you move Tyler Smith who's been so good at left tackle down to guard and Peters in at left tackle uh, uh, with one game to go in the regular season before you get to the postseason that becomes a, an int- a big story I think that was the Cowboys first three and out of the night meanwhile fair catch called for lost flag is down looks like the Cowboys have recovered it Kelvin Joseph in on the play here so a whole bunch of stuff going on right now who's got it what's the penalty here you go fair catch called for he's touching him when yeah, he... Joseph is there yeah yeah definitely hey, Terry what are you seeing absolutely fair catch interference Al he, okay. he obstructs his path to the ball clearly a foul So the Titans will get it. Kick catch interference by the kicking team number one. This 15-yard penalty will be from the from the spot of the foul because the kicking team recovered the ball. It'll be first down Tennessee. All right, there you have it. We showed you the NFC, now the AFC playoff picture. So Buffalo is in, Kansas City is in. Who's going to be number one? We don't know yet. Bengals are in. Jaguars right now would own the tie break, but that doesn't mean anything because it's going to all depend on next week's game. Meanwhile, you got Baltimore in, Chargers are in, and Miami is uh, holding on for the moment to that last spot, but the other teams are still alive. Incredible the, the, the job John Harbaugh has done without Lamar Jackson, still still holding him into a spot there at 10 and 5. They finished the year with the Bengals uh, at the end of uh, the regular season, but Tyler Huntley has stepped in there. They've done a good job of just kind of mm-hmm. finding ways to win games. John Harbaugh figuring out a way every year, it seems. Meanwhile, that pass is good for a first down. Burks with the catch. And they caught him inbound, so the clock keeps rolling from the 44 over the middle. That's taken there by the tight end Austin Hooper just shy of the 50 four and a half to go again for people that don't realize what's happening here with with Josh Dobbs a guy that's only been here eight days and now he's being asked to run tempo and, and hurry up and look out from behind and throws that one out of bounds the time it was Sam Williams putting the pressure on third and four good pressure here by by San Williams getting around Clark at the right tackle spot. You know, you, people forget about Williams because of so much attention on the other pass rushers, but the rookie out of Ole Miss has given them, when he's healthy, given a real difference maker to go along with 11 and 90. Throwing Dante Fowler, Dorrance Armstrong, that's five guys. Yeah, Williams in a car accident a couple of weeks ago, missed last week's game back tonight. Meanwhile, third and four, rolling. Looking, throwing, and making the grab along the sideline there to move the six is Robert Woods for a first down. Yeah, you know, when, when he scrambles, he's not just looking to get out of there in a hurry. He, he's evaluating coverage, looking to see if there's something there, and then he takes off and he can improvise. But uh, what I love is when he improvises, his eyes are downfield. You know, he's looking for receivers to break free from those defensive backs. I know he hasn't played a lot of football, obviously, in his six years in the NFL, but you can see the, the savvy and instincts. A two-year starter in college at Tennessee and had a, a really good career there in Knoxville. A lot of time on the bench in here tonight. Throwing for 232, going deep downfield into double coverage intended for Nick Westbrook. Akine, no good. Second and long. You know, all eyes are going to be on this this team and, and their matchup with Jacksonville next week. And you and I started to touch on it a bit about you know Malik Willis, who's played a couple games, and, or Josh Dobbs, as his parents look on here. And, and I I think we've all seen a, enough from him as far as being able to handle the offense, make checks at the line, be decisive. It just feels like there's a much better rhythm to to this offense and. Than what we've seen, I'd be shocked if he's not the the the, uh, the quarterback next week. Oh, me too. And of course, Derrick Henry will be back next week. That pass is incomplete. 
Marcus Lawrence like, there, like that, yeah, able to knock that ball away. <laughs> yeah, his parents they have to be exhausted. The flight to Detroit, drive down to Nashville. <laughs> there they are, but their son, I mean, he, he loves football, he loves competition. I mean, this guy is going to work probably on the on, on a road to Mars one day. Aeronautical engineering. Can he engineer a drive here to get him back in the game? And he's hit from behind and it's incomplete. That time it's Bland who breaks that play up. So last gasp here, basically fourth and ten. But well, 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 Parsons gets so much attention with the tight ends that nobody's there to you have two tight ends, but they're they're just worried about watch them. They're just worried about dealing with Micah Parsons. So Bland comes off as a blitz. They're blocking. They're both determined to not let 11 in. And Bland says, thank you very much. I'll tiptoe past both those tight ends and get to Dobbs. Again, how does Parsons impact the game? That's another example of what he can do. And they got action again. I'll start. Offense, number 71. Five-yard penalty. Yeah, down. that's two on daily in the last couple of drives. And again, he's he's worried about getting to the outside. Once again, we've seen this a few times tonight, especially on third down. Slight movement from Armstrong, and, and Daly's trying to get that left step, that kick out step to get out there before the threat of Parsons, where he can fake upfield and get underneath. Makes it fourth and 15, the second fourth down penalty on the left tackle. Needs 15, dancing, looking out. Here comes Parsons. What else is new? Throws, and it's batted away and out of bounds incomplete. So, with 344, they turn the ball back to the Dallas Cowboys. So, week 14, Jacksonville met Tennessee. A couple of weeks back, three weeks back, in fact. There was Trevor Lawrence. Touchdown there. Lawrence running for the touchdown here. This one to Engram had a tremendous day. We saw him last week against the Jets. One of four turnovers for the Titans that did them in. And Jacksonville won. So, you know, at one point, seven and three were the Titans and looked like the Jaguars were dead. Hold up the story right now. Dancing. Gain a one here for Elliott. So you go back to that game, which was played here. Lawrence, 368 passing yards. Ingram, 11 catches. Derrick Henry, 155 scrimmage yards. He'll be back next week. But those four turnovers killed them, much as the penalties tonight have killed the Titans with 124 yards and penalties. Trevor Lawrence, from that game on, he has just been a difference for that Jags mm -hmm. team. And it's become his team. He's the leader. And he's playing as well as anybody. It's uh, Terrell Basham on the ground. Let's take a look at our next gen stats powered by AWS with CD Lamb. What a night he has had. Look at his 10 receptions, 99 yards. 17 yards more than expected, 239 over the since week seven. That's when Dak Prescott came back, where they've really continued to develop their chemistry. I think because there's so many different weapons, CeeDee Lamb gets a lot of attention. But I think as these other players develop and grow around him, I think it's just going to give CeeDee Lamb more chances to make plays in his offense. So Basham in pain, he comes out. Ball at the 48 right now with 318, and the clock will run. Second and nine. So Dak in a position to milk that clock now. With three minutes to play. Elliott to the outside. Next to nothing. So Zeke tonight. 19 carries, but he's averaging less than two yards per tote. 37 total yards. Ken, he's going up against one of the top run defenses, even with these injuries. The scheme that they play. They play downhill. I mean, it is not easy to run the football. And there's Pollard who 
Looks like he'll be back next week with that thigh injury. Get back to having that that tandem, but they, they you know they knew coming in it was going to be tough even with these backups playing. But they'd have to do most of their damage through the air. And they'll go to Washington next week. Here's C.D. Lamb for a short game, but that is enough to. Put him into triple figures. Yes, it does. I jumped the gun before, but now he's at 101 on 11 catches. It's official. There you go. It's official. Hold all tickets until it's official. There you go. Two minutes to go. And we're, we're staying. So, okay. We've sold all the merchandise we need to sell tonight, brother. <laughs> Google Pixel Post Game Show is coming up after the game. Marshawn Lynch. Will be aboard. Best moments in the first season of TNF. Partner, it's been a pleasure. It's been great. Meanwhile, the watch list before we start to say goodbye. Carolina, Tampa Bay on Fox Sunday is the early window. Then you got CBS gets the Minnesota Green Bay game late on Sunday. Jim Nance and Tony Romo will be there. Then the uh, the Sunday flex game. All of a sudden, the Pittsburgh Steelers hanging in after that win at Baltimore on NBC Sunday night. And then Monday night is the, the game of the weekend, really. Buffalo against Cincinnati on Monday night. So Malibu Kelly Hayes, you've been with me for a thousand years. George Hill, fantastic job. You got your boys as well. I did, yeah, Darren Brown's been helping me out. Right. We've had a lot of fun. Bears in the truck. What a, what a great year, the first year here with, with Amazon. And uh, been a lot of fun. Just an, I've told you this, just an honor to work with you. I obviously watched you from... For so many years, I appreciate uh, everything. You're an animal. I mean, to do you do Thursday, you do Saturday, you do game day. It's yeah. impossible. Headed to Atlanta tonight. Yeah, I know you for the the big game. Uh, Ohio State, Georgia on Saturday. Nine yard line. Meanwhile, J.J. Watt has announced his retirement. What a career he had! So many of those great seasons in Houston. Now with Arizona, has the brand new baby. Uh, congratulations uh, to him on a fantastic career. Just love watching him play. And, and, and what a way to go out with the way he's still playing, right? Sure. I mean, I think a lot of people thought, well, he's still a, a, a difference maker. And, and, you know, love to see guys go out on their terms. And to Fred Gadelli, who came in, and, you know, for years I worked with Fred, and to make this whole thing happen, Pierre Moussa doing a great job directing this year. Out to the 22-yard line goes Jonathan Ward. So, you know, there was no infrastructure. Amazon had really, you know, nothing. I mean, you had the Jared Stacy, you had Marie Donahue. <laughs> right. A vision. It, it was they, a vision. They hired everybody, put together a fantastic group on the pregame and postgame show. And, you know, it's, it's kind of an amazing thing to make it all happen this way. From the 21-yard line. Through the middle. And up to the 29 goes Jonathan Ward. And our stage manager, Trish McNutt. I, you know, I work in a lot of different booths for a lot of years. Right. She she just took it to a whole different level with what she does up here. Oh, my gosh. It is like you, you're spoiled. It's like Taj Mahal every single week up here. <laughs> I, I don't know what, how I'm going to try to bring her into Saturday. Yeah, I've been spoiled for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> The food that you you bring in here is <laughs> right. amazing. No vegetables. You know that. Second down and four. And nice little run here out to the 40-yard line goes Jonathan Ward. So the Titans are going to have a six-game losing streak and yet a chance to not only get to the playoffs with a win next week, but to host the play. Remember that the team that wins that game next week is going to host the playoff game, not just get into the playoffs. Posted against probably at the moment looks like Baltimore. And again, I, I'm sure Mike Vrabel won't address it after the game, but I think we all, anybody who watched this game, is going to assume that, that Josh Dobbs, who made his first career start, will be making his second career start next week oh, yeah. against Trevor Lawrence and the Jags with the division on the line. With a full week of preparation, and that's going to do it here. So. 12 wins for the Cowboys. The Cowboys still alive to win the NFC East. They win next week, and Philadelphia somehow loses the next two games. Then all of a sudden, uh, Dallas would be either the one seed or the two seed or the three seed. They could be any of those, which is a gigantic difference from being the five seed. Anyway, Dak Prescott and company, 283 yards. They win the game, do the Cowboys 27 to 13, and Carissa and the guys. 
will be wrapping things up from Nashville on the Google Pixel Post Game Show right after these messages. 